My name is Eric George with the Building Performance Group and this morning we are in Payne's Crossing in Georgetown, Kentucky which is a Dominion Home neighborhood and we're getting ready to do another final inspection on one of their Energy Star qualified homes. Um, this home is about 2100 square feet and it's built on a conditioned crawl space which means that there are no vents and the foundation walls are insulated and sealed. So we're going to do an air leakage test uh, to see how tight the house is. We'll do a duct leakage test to see how much duct leakage there is to outside. Uh, we'll also check the insulation levels in the attic and the crawl space, uh, get some model numbers, and see how this house tests out. So come with me and see how the process works. Okay, now we're inside. We've got the blower door set up behind me. Uh, I'm going to do an air leakage test on the house. And this house is about 2,055 square feet on a full crawl space. Uh, so I'm hopefully going to see a number that's close to about half one, C, one half CFM per square foot of living space. So something around 11, 12, 1300 CFM. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this turned on and see what we get. So now I've got the house depressurized at 50 pascals. And the pressure gauge here is showing me that at that pressure difference, this house is leaking about 1190 CFM, which is really good for a house that's 2100 square feet. So a uh, good start to the process. I'm going to turn off the blower door, seal off the ductwork, and we're going to do a duct leakage test. For this duct right here, um, it's a little bit bigger than what my plastic covers will actually cover and seal, so I'm going to use this product called Duct Mask, uh, which is a perforated adhesive tape to cover half of the duct and then cover the rest of it with the black uh, duct cover. So what I'm doing right now is I'm getting ready to set the duct blaster up uh, to do the duct leakage test. And normally I, I actually connect the duct blaster directly to the furnace cabinet, but since this furnace is in the garage, I can't hook it up to the garage um, without changing the whole test. So I'm going to hook it up to the closest return um, register that I can find in the house, which is this one right here. So uh, what I'm going to do is just tape this to the register and make sure it's all sealed in place and seal off all the duct work and once I'm ready we'll get the duct leakage test started. Now for the duct leakage test I have to use a static pressure probe uh, looks like this and I find the supply duct that's closest to the furnace and what I'm going to do is tape off the duct here and then put the static pressure probe into the duct itself. So I'm going to tape it off, seal it to the floor, got a static pressure probe down in there, and now we're almost ready to do the duct blaster test. So now I've got the house all set up ready to do the duct blaster test. Um, what I've got is all the outside windows and doors are shut, uh, I've got all the interior doors open, all the duct work has been taped or blocked off, and now I'm going to turn the blower door back on and create a pressure difference of about half of what I did the first time, so it'll be 25 pascals instead of 50. And whatever air leaks into the house and into the duct system, I'm going to use the duct blaster to balance it back out. And however much duct leakage, or however much airflow it takes for the duct blaster to balance back out, is the total amount of duct leakage to the outside. So I'm going to turn the blower door on, and we're going to find out what kind of duct leakage we have. So now we're going to do the duct blaster test and the number on the left is the static pressure in the duct line right now with the blower door running at 25 pascals. I have to get that left number to zero and then the number that shows up on the right is the total amount of duct leakage to the outside. So we're going to see what happens here. Right at about 102 CFM of duct leakage to the outside, which is a little bit more than I'd like to see, but it still passes Energy Star standards. Uh, you can't have more than 6 CFM of duct leakage per 100 square foot of living space to outside. And this house is about 2,100 square feet, so you could have actually over 120, about 126 CFM of duct leakage. So this house passes Energy Star standards for the duct leakage test. So now that we're done with the air leakage test and the duct leakage test, 
Uh, my next step is to gather the model number information off of the heat pump system and the water heater and the outside unit as well. So I'm going to record the information that I find on my home spec sheet here. And after I'm done here, then we'll check the attic for the insulation level and uh, we'll be almost wrapped up. So here, one of the last tests that I'm going to do for the Energy Star certification is a pressure uh, balance test. And what I'm looking for is to see that each one of the bedrooms have, uh, are balanced to the main part of the house. Uh, what, am I, what I'm basically saying is the same amount of supply air that goes into each one of the bedrooms needs to come back out of the bedrooms so that that room is the same temperature as the rest of the rooms. It's an even distribution. Uh, the comfort throughout the house should be the same. So I'm going to take my pressure gauge and my hose here and I've got the furnace fan on. I'm going to throw the hose into the bedroom and close the door. And the number I want to see on here is less than three pascals on the left. So in the master bedroom, I can see that we have two pascals of pressure difference. So that's fine. That's good for Energy Star. So now I'm going to check the other two bedrooms in the house. Now the last thing I'm going to do today for the Energy Star certification is get up in the hot 125 degree attic this morning and check the insulation level. So I got my headlight here. Get up in here and see what the insulation looks like. And it looks like about 9 to 10 inches of cellulose. It looks pretty even throughout. So that would equal about an R38. So R38 is good for me. So the attic insulation looks good. The last thing that I want to make sure is that all the way around the attic hatch here, there's actually a weather stripping on the top side of the trim so that when the attic door comes down, it compresses onto the weather stripping and it makes an airtight seal. And the other thing I want to make sure is that the actual top side of the attic hatch itself is insulated. And this one does not have insulation currently on top of it. So I'm going to make a note that the superintendent needs to make sure that there's insulation attached to the top side of the attic hatch so that we don't have a big hole in the insulation in the ceiling. So other than that, the house is good to go and we'll be wrapping up soon. So now we're all done with the Energy Star final inspection for this home in Payne's Crossing. Uh, the home does pass Energy Star certification. Uh, there are a couple things the builder needs to fix before the house gets moved into, but all in all, another good house by Dominion Homes. Um, I'm expecting the house to probably score somewhere in the mid to low 70s, which would mean that the house is some, somewhere around 25% more efficient than a code-built all-electric home. So uh, these homes are more comfortable to live in. They have lower utility bills, and uh, they're, they're going to last a lot longer because they're more durable. So uh, that's it for today. We'll see you on the next one.